Okay, we have Cindy, our family, our friend, our beautiful anointed sister <laughs> speaking today. Yeah. And I want you all to be ready because the Lord is going to open some things up that we've been waiting to hear. So Cindy, go for it. No pressure here. <laughs> I, I struggled actually with this, what, I, what I'm going to say. I, I, and I, um, is it for you? Um, it's probably for everybody, but in different, it has different layers. So we're all in a different place in the body of Christ. But if you think about it, there has never been a time in history that we can just sit and rest and do nothing. Never in all of history. Unless you were in the garden and after you've named all the animals and everything, you were able to rest, but you rest in the Lord. And that was a good place to be. So can you imagine how much Father God, Abba, loves us that he allowed the world as we know it to stop so he could get our attention? Mm -hmm. Why would God do that? I mean, why would he do that? So in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, a lot of times we use this for um, salvation purposes, but it's really appropriate for today. The love of God that he has for us is so big that... He allowed the world to be stopped. Now, he did, not, he did not say, okay, I'm just stopping the world. He knew the circumstances involved in the world, and he took this opportunity and took advantage of it to do a lot of things regarding our, um, our lockdown. So one of the things he did is he made us stop and think. There's a lot of stopping and thinking. I know you guys have been doing, I've been doing it, hopefully other people. And I know that there's different layers to people, different types of Christianity. And I was talking to a really good friend of mine yesterday. And she said, you know, Cindy, about 10% are really going to understand this. And so we need for the other 90% to catch up because we're all in different places. So why would God need to do that? Well, it's really simple because we weren't listening. We just weren't listening. Um, he gave us the Holy Spirit and we still didn't listen. Like I said, different degrees we're all at. And one of the reasons is we do not find time to rest in him. We are human. Instead of being human beings, we've got into being human doings. And there's a reason why he has called us to rest. And I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. On the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He set it apart. He made it holy. Because in it, had rest, he had rested from all his works, which God had created and made. And made. And then Exodus 28, it says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Well, all that word Sabbath means is rest. So in this time of history or his story, the Christian life and the world looks similar. We're all going, 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 and we're not being. We're not being human beings, we're being human doings. Now this word keeps just resonating with me and it goes over and over and over. And I know we've heard the word reset. We've been hearing that from a lot of people, and I've heard that word myself. But the, but the other thing that I heard was dormant, not doormat, dormant, dormant state. Now, all of creation goes through a dormant state. Plants and animals have dormant states. Fruit trees, vegetation, everything has a dormant state that it goes through. And there's reasons for it. There, there's seasons that we go through that God puts these, these um, plants in a dormant state. One is so they can rest and then produce beautiful fruit. You know, another is because of the cold. So God in his infinite wisdom allowed plants and trees to go dormant so they wouldn't freeze. 
I mean, there goes the Big Bang Theory, right? <laughs> this is just too complex for, for a Big Bang Theory to even come into play. You know, and the same with animals. Uh, I know if we all, a lot of us have dogs and cats and, and they're in a shedding place right now because they're getting ready for summer. They're shedding their winter coat. So there's, there's something in, in, um, in the vegetables, there's something in, in, in um, animals that we really need to look at closer so we can see what God is saying to us. So certain animals, they hibernate in the winter. True, yes. <laughs> And there's reasons for that. One is um, to conserve energy. He does that with bears so they can conserve energy. The other is in winter, there's certain um, foods that they're not able to get. So God puts them in a hibernated or dormant state until they can come and replenish their, their food supply. So it's there when they have it. It just would be like God to do that. He places a trigger in plants and animals, and they know where and how to prepare for what's coming. What does that have to do with us? It has everything to do with us. There is, like I said, never been a time where we could just stop and be. We don't have a trigger. God has not placed a trigger. We do not hibernate. We rest. God has given us that time of rest. And he has it, he has it, it's not an automatic thing because we have a free will. So he gives us his word and he says, remember the seventh day, the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Well, just because that's Old Testament doesn't mean it does not apply today. It absolutely applies today. The only thing is we went from the law to salvation and God's grace because Jesus, what he did on the cross for us. But Exodus 28 is still there. We just have not applied it because we are busy for God. <laughs> Uh, there's a time to plow and there is a time to rest. But unfortunately, we have taken the two and we plowed and then we call rest um, throwing a prayer up to God. Like I said, we're all in different phases. So we have to just really gauge what phase we're in right now. That's pretty extreme for God to stop the world. So being busy for God is not going to be an option anymore. <laughs> when we are so busy for God that we are too busy for God, then we have left our first love and it's taken second place. Now we still spend a lot of time with God. We pray, we minister, we, we you know, we, we talk to him but it's on autopilot right. and it's so subtle that we haven't really even understood that it was that, that subtle on what we were doing. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so at one point I found myself seeking God for everybody else, but me, because I remember I'm doing ministry, Lord, I'm doing your work. I'm doing ministry. And I thought, what are you doing, Cindy? Why are you seeking God for everybody else but you? See, that, that was flipped. If you're seeking God and spending time with him, what did Jesus do every time he had an opportunity? He would go away and he'd stay with the Father and spend time. And from that, he was energized and he was renewed. And he, he, was, he would jump right back into ministry. I mean, he could be asleep. And because he spent time with the Father, he could get up and go, I can minister because he did it out of his overflow. And so yeah. instead of us doing ministry and life on seeking God for other people, we need to do it out of our overflow because that's when the people get the abundance and that's how we stay refreshed and that's how we stay renewed. And that's how we stay in, in, in just right alignment with God. So what is God doing in this time? One is rest. The other is repentance. 
How many times have we not heard that word? We have taken repentance and we've made it nice, like, okay, God, I did something wrong. I'm so sorry. But repentance really is turning away. 2 Corinthians 7, 9, I now rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God that you might not suffer loss in anything through us. Our repentance has been watered down like the word has been watered down in the body of Christ. I'm like I'm saying, not all, not everybody, but the majority has been watered down. Most people are quoting other pastors instead of quoting the written word of God. And so what we have is less power than we've ever had in Christianity. Why does God need to stop the world? That's why. Because we need to be on our faces repenting. Through this whole time that we had, you know, I call it lockdown, call it what you want, you know, um, um, whatever the word is. <laughs> um, I, my husband and I were, um, he just went back to work, but he was here for about a couple of months, almost a couple of months. And, and we were just talking about little things and we just like, oh, that's probably not good. So we began a lifestyle of repentance through this time. Um, now, for you, what I, what I consider repentance is, is different than what you would because we're all in different you know, places and levels. And what I can get away with, you can't. And what you can't get away with, I can. So it just, I mean, it just really depends. It's not, I mean, if you're not in like sin, but little things that I noticed um, what is it? I just came off of a fast, but it wasn't a it wasn't a um, a fast that uh, a food. But I, I like to you know I just like sometimes I like to vegetate and you know do video video games, and I I for ten days I stopped that and I did not realize how much time that I wasted playing those games. And I'm like, oh my god! Now see, for somebody else, it's like, oh no, I love doing that. Well, good. I mean, if if your heart doesn't condemn you neither do I. But for me, I just wasted hours of my day in my life where I could have spent it doing something else or spending more time in the Word of God. And I've noticed that I'm able to spend more time in the Word of God because I, I've given some of those things up. Like I said, not for everybody, but, but he's dealing with us in a lot of places. And then I think it's chapter or verse six of that scripture. It says, therefore, leaving the elementary teachings about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying a foundation of repentance from dead works and faith towards God. I heard this the other day and it really does ring true. Revival is coming, but not without repentance. How many times in the body of Christ have you heard revival, 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 but we have not heard repentance? How is God going to bring revival when the church is still doing what she has been doing? And so he's going to fill us up with new when the old is still in there and it's starting to smelly and ugly and, and everything like that. Uh, we just did a, a, an activation um, for, I, I, I'm not sure it was for, um, it was on a Friday, Good Friday, and um, the healing rooms had gotten uh, wine, and it was for, it was the purpose for um, communion. So we went, um, and wherever you were at, at your house, we went and poured out the wine. We were pouring out the old, and... My husband had said something, and I, you know, her, he, he's not a talker, but when he says something, it really does mean something. He said, Lord, we just pour out this wine because we can't have the new mixed with the old. So as we pour this out, would you pour in the new what you want for this season in our life? And that's exactly what God is calling us today. It's like, pour out that old, do the repentance, do what you have to do, get rid of the old works. 
So when I pour into you the new, it's not going to be mingled with something that doesn't apply today. If you'll notice, there's um, and, and nothing. I'm, I'm saying nothing is wrong with this, but something's wrong with this. So there we go. You 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 gauge what I'm saying. There is a lot of people that took to social media just like that and started talking and talking and talking, but they were saying the same things. It's God did not call us to grow our ministry at this time. He has not called us to grow our ministry. God is dealing with each of us individually, our hearts. It's really an individual intimate thing that he's doing. But as we do this, then as the body of Christ, we can come together and say, Lord, we have sinned against you. We have not done what your word says. And in doing that, if, if you're getting on social media and you are just giving the word because that's what you're used to doing, then you need to stop. I, I, seriously, you need to stop. Because we, if this is not the time for old wineskin. If you're going to go on, give us something that applies to what we're doing here today. Lord, we're all going through something. This is a very serious time, not only in the body, but people are not able to buy food. And I, I went through a time where it's a good thing you didn't hear what I said, you know, maybe yesterday, but I was frustrated because I thought, Lord, why are people asking for money? when most people cannot even pay their bills or feed their children. And where is the body of Christ? We need to say, Lord, who are those people? Show me those people because we, we may never know. But if we ask the Holy Spirit, would you highlight someone I need to bless today out of my own, what my own needs, would you show me that I can bless them? Because that's the body of Christ. This thing of, of Hollywood Christianity, this thing of, of uh, how many, you know, conferences can we do a year? Nothing wrong with conferences. The one you guys had was the bomb. But if we're doing something out of the motivation of our heart that's not right, then we need to get this right. We are in such a pivotal time where the, um, the harvest is so ripe. It's so right. People need, they need hope. Who's hope? Jesus is hope. I, I was at a grocery store when this first happened. And this beautiful little lady, she must have been around my mom's age, about maybe 80 something. And um, so I, you know, I, I went by her because I love to talk in the store. I said, so what do you think about all this? She goes, I said, did you ever think in your lifetime you'd ever see this? And she said, no, I never did. She's, and then she said, I didn't even know this was happening because this is the first time I was able to get out because I'm on a fixed income and I didn't have any money until now. Well, I'm at the, I'm at the store just buying things, you know, and I'm not thinking. It's, I'm blessed. It's okay to be blessed. But it's what do I do with my blessings? So I just happened to, we just happened to um, finish a, a, just a small, co the conference that we had to go do, so we couldn't be with your, the rest of your conference. We did this little seminar, and I just happened to have money in my wallet that I was supposed to put in the bank. And I heard the Lord say, give her that money. So I took it out of my purse quickly, and I put it in her, in her I said, here, please take this. She said, oh, no, no, I can't. I said, oh, yes, you can. She said, no, I can't. So I stuck it in her purse. And she said, if I, could, if I could hug you, I would. Now, I'm not saying that to say, oh, Cindy, you're so awesome. I'm saying that because when you allow the Spirit of God to move through you, I had just asked him this that morning, how can I bless someone? I carry toilet paper in my car in case somebody needs some. I don't think we, we're going through that anymore, but, you know, Carry a bag of rice, carry something in your car, because the Holy Spirit's going to say, they need that. They need this. Carry extra cash. If you don't have extra cash, I bet you $5 is something to somebody else. So the body of Christ, has got, we've gotten so far off, we've gotten into our little Christianity Hollywood that um, we forgot what really we're all about. 
It's salvation. It's salvation. It's healing the sick. It's healing those that are brokenhearted. It's visiting those that don't have anybody. What are we doing? This makes me want to cry. We're enjoying the fruit of our labor. We're, you know, we're having fun. We're, our, our God has become our entertainment, our money. It's become, oh, look at me, I have a name. Or look what I can do, look at my giftings. God, forgive us. Why have we gotten so far? And, you know, granted, it's not all our fault because we have a real enemy out there. And he was just having a good old field day with us. We just got off track. And God so loved the world that he stopped it just for us to say, hey, let me get on track. Let me get back on track. And I'm loving everything he's doing. Now, we all knew that there was something wrong with the state of our church. We all knew there's something wrong with the church. But we really, you know, it's like, what's going on, Lord? So, and I, I often wondered, Lord, how are you going to, because you all know last year, uh, you know, I complained a little bit at the church and he said, don't talk about my bride and because I'm part of the bride, I'm part of the problem. <laughs> so Lord, how do we cooperate? And I never thought that he would do it like this, that he would stop the world just to get us right. And so I believe in this season, we're in a tree pruning season. He's removing those dead things that are keeping our fruit from producing healthy fruit. And I, I think that, you know, most of our, for us, our fruit is good. It, you know, it is. But some of it's old and we're still working off the old fruit when he wants us to have new fruit juice instead of the old fruit juice. So, and then Matthew 3, 8 says, therefore bear fruit in keeping with repentance. There's the word repentance again. That word needs to come back into the church and it needs to come back into our daily lives. Not when we've done something so, oh Lord, but it needs to come back. And because of the lack of that word, we have not shown the next generation what repentance is. So their idea of repentance is, oh, I had sex with my girlfriend. Sorry, you know, that doesn't, that we haven't shown them holiness and goodness. And then John 15, 2, it says, every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so it may bear more fruit. We have not been cultivating our tree because we've been too busy for God. And then the ones that are really busy for God, they go, well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with me because Matthew 522, it says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons and perform miracles? And then I will declare to you, to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It's tree trimming time. It is tree trimming time. I don't know about you, but I don't want to give people stale fruit. They deserve God's best because God is the best. It's time for us to go into that solitary place and commune with the Father. And one of the other things besides the repentance and rest is it's time to get rid of idols in our life. Idols in the church. And I don't think people started out in their ministries with idolatry. So here's what God is saying. Return back to your first love. Remember when you first started ministering or ministering or praying for somebody? The excitement because you knew Jesus was right there with you. He was, he was, he was you know, he's like, go, Cindy, you know, go, Kim, go, Delinda. Um, go, Mark. And, and he knew he was right there. And when you saw the works that he did, you were excited. And you were excited in the Lord. And then what happens is we get used to it because, you know, you get used to something and you expect it. And then we begin to think, oh, it's something I'm doing. And then we begin to go on autopilot. 
I can do ministry. I was just talking to a friend, oh, months ago, and, and uh, we were talking about, you know, what was going on in the body and, and just how we felt. We were on autopilot and didn't realize it. Autopilot is when your giftings, you know your giftings. I've been doing my giftings for almost 25 years. I've been doing the, this ministry almost 25 years. And so I know my giftings. And, and so I can just do it. Well, it's God's grace that allowed me to do that because I was seeking him on their behalf. And because the people wanted to get free, God's love for them got them free. But if I would have, if I would have sought him first for me, and then I went out of my overflow, then I wouldn't be getting tired. I wouldn't have to take a sabbatical. It's that we, we, we're, we're balanced. We're seeking him. We're resting in him. Deuteronomy 4.9 says, Only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently so you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life, but make them known to your sons and your, and your grandsons. So, idols. We get to be a big minister. We travel the country. Nothing wrong with being a big minister or traveling the country. I am going to say this now. Um, your conference with, with the Hammonds, and I'll just say the name, um, Jane and Tim Hammonds. No. Tom Hammonds. Tim's his brother. <laughs> um, when, when I got to that conference on Thursday night, what I saw was something so profound and remarkable. I hope you guys are hearing this or somebody gets it to them. I saw two people and, as, and they've been around for a long time and their names are big. But when that woman hugged that lady who was crying and she embraced her, I thought that is the true child of God. She did not allow her fame to get before her. And because of that, I believe that there's a double portion of blessing that's going to be coming to her and her husband. Please pass that on. So that's what we're looking for in the body. When you say, follow me as I follow Christ, I want to follow somebody who's genuine. Now the people who are, who are looking at themselves like, like there's somebody, it's only because they've been caught. They've been put in a snare and, and, and God is giving them opportunity to deal with that. A lot of them are not. I am I'm looking on social media and a lot of them are not. If you're asking for large amounts of money or if you're asking for money, this is not the time to do it. People are in need. And if you have to ask people for money for your ministry, maybe it's time to rethink that ministry. I know what I'm saying is not popular, but it's true. So, idols. So in Galatians, so a lot of us have been working out of the flesh part, and, and it's not that we've been doing it on purpose. However, if we're going, if we're on autopilot, a lot of the flesh part's going to get in. So God is removing all of that. So Galatians 5, 19 and 20, it says the deeds of the flesh are, ev are evident, immorality and per purity, sexuality, idolatry. That's what I wanted to get to. Idolatry and to jealousy and strife. It's, that's all over the church, jealousy and strife. Um, it's time to get rid of the idols. Our ministries can be an idol. Activities can be an idol. Entertainment can be an idol. People can be an idol. Money can be an idol. It's time to put those things away. God is not going to have that anymore. And I, I, I have a, a couple of questions I want to pose, and I want people to think about this. In John 17, 4, it says, I'm sorry, 5. Um, so Jesus is getting ready to go to be with the Father, and he's getting ready to be crucified. And he said, now, in 5, 17, 5, now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I have with you before the world, the world was. At this point of the church, do you think that we could step into that glory with them?
I get a thumbs up on one, but you're the 10%. Two, <laughs> but, but that's the 10%. Uh, I had, to, and I can't even say the person's name and because you would never know her, but the, the location, you would know who it was. Um, just walking around, I said, so what do you think about all this? And it just had happened. She goes, I don't know. I guess it's okay. I was talking to a Christian. And I thought, oh my, are, are you serious? Um, absolutely no clue or no thought that God was trying to do something because I just, I just, you know, I do my Bible study. I go to church on Sunday and basically good people, basically are good people, but there's no fire anymore. It's, it's works and it's religion. And, and I, that grieved me so much. So that's one thing to think about. Could we, could we enter that glory with God and his son, Jesus? And then the other thing is, um, we're not even close to being here. And it's uh, John 17. Um, the glory, uh, starting with 22 to 23, the glory which you have given me, I've given to them, that they may be one, and here's the clincher, just as we are one. God the Father and his Son are one, so that, oh, uh, are one. I'm in them and you in me, that they may, perfected, they may be perfected in unity. How many see people see unity across the body of Christ right now? Everybody has their own little camp. Everybody's doing their thing. Everybody wants to be more popular than the other. We have these self um, appointed uh, leaders that I, I never realized that we were supposed to have leaders so that the world may know that you sent me and loved me even as you have loved even as you have loved me or sent them you love them even as you have loved me so we don't have unity so we're working on rest we're working on repentance we're working on breaking down idols and we're working on unity why did God stop the world? That's why. So, what is he doing with the time he's given us? What has God done with the time he's given us? Well, I'm still doing repenting. I'm still asking God to clean out my closets. As I physically clean out my closets, guess, guess what else is getting cleaned? everything else inside me because I'm not taking this old and mixing it with the new. When we go into this next season, those, I, the Lord showed me three phases. The first phase is where we're at right now. And those who have an ear to hear began to begin to take action and look at themselves and go through this, this little list here. And then those that had no clue or idea God is just saying, oh, hey, come on. I, I want you to understand what I'm saying here. They begin to get a clue. And then you have those who have absolutely no clue or do not wish to have a clue because they don't want to lose their place. So they continue to do what they're doing. And then God's going to give them another opportunity because this is not the last of this. Um, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. He's coming back. For a, for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Well, we got some wrinkles and we're not going to get rid of them by doing any kind of facelifts. We, we're not gonna do it the fast way, we're going to do it his way. So what are we doing with the time? What I do wanna say is if anybody's listening that's like, okay, I'm not a Christian, why would I wanna be one if God had to you know, stop the world and put you on time out? And I would say to them, you are at such a wonderful time in the body of Christ because he's already dealt with us. You just get to experience the, the freedom that we got. You get to come in for a bride, with a bride that, that's, that's been dealt with. And so you get, to, you get all the attributes of 
when somebody has come off of timeout and they're doing okay with dad and you know everything's okay you get to come in on that 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 good side and it's it's like this for you who do not know jesus or or you know maybe i do i'm not really sure or it's like why would i want to know him because this god who we serve as christians put us in timeout because he loved us so much. Remember, we're talking the world. He took the whole world, set it over here, and said, everybody's on timeout. And then he spoke to us individually and corporately. And then he said, okay, you guys, all right, you're getting this. And then he says, I want you to go get those ones who don't know me and bring them in. So for those who don't know him, I'm saying you're at a good time. And I'm not going to say if you, if you ask Jesus in your heart that everything's going to be rosy. and It's not, okay? It's just not. It's going to be one of the hardest things you do, but it's going to be the most rewarding. You're going to go through a lot of hard times, but at least you'll have the one who knows how to get you through those hard times with you. And his name is Jesus. Remember, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. And I invite you to, to ask him to come into your heart, to ask him to be your Lord and Savior, and to learn how to grow in him. And don't give up, because it's so worth it. I, I think I've been on this journey, journey for almost 40 years, and I've had good times, I've had bad times, I've had wonderful times, I had times where, where I don't think I'm going to make it. But guess what? The one who loves me and who gave his son for me, walked me through it. And so that is my invitation to you. And um, I don't have any prophetic words because I really believe that this is for me, not for anybody else, but for me, this is a season that we all need to really just get with the father by ourselves and say, what are you saying, Lord? So thank you for having me. I hope it wasn't too, no, I didn't. Yep. I said exactly what I was supposed to. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Cindy. You did. It's a great word and it's a timely word. Um, I really believe that that is what the reset is all about. <laughs> so, uh, this morning, just talking with my husband was about repentance and that the church is responsible for a lot of what the world is doing. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's tons of repentance to be had. Um, anyways, thank you so much for pouring your heart out to us. You know, truth is needed in a time like this. And sometimes it's not easy to deliver, but I really felt the heart of the Father in your delivery. Very, it was a beautiful, beautiful word. Wow. So I would say take your time and, and really get before the Lord with things that were said and, you know, for your own life, you know, not necessarily just even as the generals as a whole, but you, you know, what the father has to say to you, because this is that season. There is a, it's a time to really hear because the new is going to look way different than where we've been.